Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And yes, today we are talking about the very, um, how do we say, copy pasta Pan American Cruiser Line that was announced over the weekend. I'm just getting to this now because there's a lot to unpack here. Um, <laughs> and it, it's something what Wargaming did here with this line. So, yeah, let's just go ahead, let's get on into it, and we'll talk about it as we go. So, link to this dev blog will be in the description down below, along with another article that I will be referencing during this breakdown. So, they say, Pan American Cruisers Close Testing. A researchable branch of Pan American Light Cruisers will be added to the game. We're sharing the first details. The new branch will consist of ships and projects originating from different Latin American countries, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, uh, Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Please note that the branch is currently under development, so the models of some ships are still not finalized. The gameplay concept of the branch may change during testing, which is planned to begin in early 2023. The new ship's main battery guns will have a medium firing range and good ballistics, which make them effective at any distance. The guns also have a decent rate of fire. The cruiser's torpedoes have average characteristics. Their good concealment will allow them to get into a good position and be the first to strike when conditions are favorable or to safely retreat if necessary. A distinctive feature of the branch will be the presence of combat instructions. However, the branch concept is still under development, so we'll share more details once it is closer to completion. Ship consumables will include Repair Party and a choice between Hydro or DFAA in a single slot. So they start out with uh, the Tier 1, which would be the Hercules, a river-class frigate built in Canada in 1942 for the British Navy under the name HMS Alder. That same year, she was transferred to the U.S. Navy, where she was renamed USS Asheville, and took part in the Battle of the Atlantic. After the war, she was decommissioned from the U.S. Navy in 1946, sold to Argentina, what was first named Hercules, and from 1961, Juan B. Az oh man, Azopado. She served in the Argentine Navy until 1969, so standard tier one a frigate corvette as a cruiser. So, the tier two, the Amarante Barroso. Barroso? Maybe. The armored cruiser Amarante Barroso was built by order of, the, of Brazil in Great Britain and served in the Brazilian Navy between 1896 and 1931. She was named after the famous Admiral of the Imperial Brazilian Navy, who bore the title Baron of Amazonas. She entered, uh, she entered, what the heck? She entered, has gone down in history. She entered and has gone down in history as the first Brazilian ship to be equipped with a radio telegraph. So something you might note about the stuff blog, one, the models aren't really done, of course. And to the, and you know, I'm not one to talk too much about this. The grammar of this devlog is terrible. Um, so bear with me. It's not actually me messing up a lot of the gr gr grammatical errors in this video for once. The devlog is typed pretty, uh, pretty screwy. Also, worth note, this is one of two real ships on this list. Um, I, I guess three with the tier one, but this is one, one of three real ships. Alright, and then at tier 3 we have the Vincetti Guerrero. Uh, Guerrero. Vincetti Guerrero. This is a version of the light cruiser Navarra that has served in the Spanish Navy from 1923 to 1956. This Spanish built ship was based on the British Birmingham class light cruisers, three ships that are in service in 1914, which were the most advanced and successful British cruisers of the time. She was laid down in 1915, first named Reina Victoria U oh, oh, Ugina. Ugina. And in 1931 to 1936, renamed Republica. With the beginning of the Spanish Civil War, it came under the control of the Nationalists and once again renamed Navarra. It had a good na uh, navigability and relatively high speed to the 1920s. Since Mexico ordered gunboats and patrol ships from Spain in the first half of the 1930s, it can be assumed that they would have also purchased a ship of this type. Get used to that justification, ladies and gentlemen. And then the Cor Cordoba. This ship is, equ is the equivalent of a British Tier 4 cruiser Danae. In 1925, two D-class cruisers were transferred to New Zealand, and in 1943 to 1944, two more were to the Polish Navy. 
By the early 1930s, the D-Class light cruisers, a total of eight were built, were already outdated and could be sold or transferred to a friendly country. As for the name, in the 20th century, a number of Colombian Navy ships were also known as Cor Cordoba, named after a town in the Bolivar Department. Pan American Light Cruiser La Argentina a dual-purpose ship, light cruiser, and training vessel, La Argentina was designed and built for by the Argentinian Navy in the UK on the basis of the light cruiser Arutza. Arutza? I think Ar Arutza. Entered to the Argentinian Navy in 1939 and served until 1974. The ship is represented in the game as of 1939 based on the original blueprints from the British archives. This is the second real ship. Everything after this is fake. Well, and besides the tier 3, the 1, and this one, that's it. The rest of these ships didn't exist in the way that they're being portrayed in this game. I also think they're holding out on the modernized version of our Argentina here for a premium ship. So here's where things start to get weird. Like, from Tier 5 back, even though, you know, a couple of them aren't real, I can see where they're going. But here down, it's it's like, what? Okay. So, the Cochrane, the Tier 6... This ship is the equivalent of Italian Premium Tier 7 cruiser, Duca de Abruzzi. The main difference is the number of main guns. Abruzzi has two three-barreled and two two-barreled 152mm turrets, while the Cochrane has four two-barreled ones. Ships of the Chilean fleet were generally ordered from other countries, so it can be assumed that a smaller version of the cruiser Abruzzi could have been ordered from Italy. Thomas Cochran, 1775 to 1860, famous British admiral and hero of the Chilean Civil War, I'm sorry, the Chilean War of Independence against Spain in 1818 and 1822, is considered the father of the Chilean Navy. So, somehow, the Italians were willing to sell one of their light cruisers to Chile. Which I'm assuming is before the war started. Uh-huh. It gets weirder. Well, this one that makes some sense too. The Coronel, Coronel, Coronel. It's supposed to be Colonel, I do believe. Balonesi, 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 Balonesi. A Fiji light cruiser that was built in Britain and entered service in the Royal Navy in 1943 under the name HMS Ceylon. She was transferred to the Peruvian Navy in 1960 as named after the Peruvian national hero Colonel Francisco Balonesi from 1860 to 1880. The cruiser, Colonel Balonesi, served until 1985. In game, she is presented as of 1960. So, again, another rule ship. And, yeah, this one makes sense. And, you know their justification of it again very 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 early model and here's where things start to get very weird so the Ignacio Alande which is the tier 8 which you might recognize from August 1941 to July 1943 American designers prepared nine draft versions of this cruiser armed with 152 millimeter mark 16 dual purpose guns in twin mounts most of them according to the Department of the Navy requirements for the number of main guns carried five to six of such turrets. The problem was that the installation of so many 200 ton emplacements in the corresponding ship's armor resulted in a displacement and size increase that was quite excessive for a light cruiser. Attempts have been made to correct it by reducing the number of main guns. In August 1941 and spring 1943, drafts under, under the letter C and H were prepared, where the main caliber was made up of eight guns and four turrets. In reality, they were rejected because, in the opinion of the General Board of the U.S. Navy, the ratio of displacement to the number of guns made such a ship inefficient. As a result, the Wooster class, with its six turrets, built by 1948, was the largest light cruiser in world history, comparable to the heavy cruiser Baltimore. Our model shows what this type of cruiser, with 452mm twin main battery turrets, might have looked like had it been built in 1948. After World War II, the United States widely practiced the transfer of warships to other nations. These were ships put into reserve after the end of the war that were often quite modern surface combat uh, combatants. Aircraft carriers were transferred to France, cruisers to Argentina, etc. For example, Mexico received four Tacoma-class frigates and 14 submarine hunters in 1947. Based on this, we can assume the Mexican fleet could also be strengthened by the latest U.S.-built light cruiser, not quite as huge as the actual Wooster, but quite suitable for the role of the most powerful ship in Central America. Ah, <sighs> keep that little spill in mind. T-3, 
Tier 9, the Santander, Santander. One of the preliminary designs of the Wooster class cruiser from 1948 during the preliminary design process, the part of the Navy considered the possibility of building a three-gun 152mm main battery turret instead of the final twin turret for this cruiser. But the idea was abandoned due to its complexity and the task of and and the uh, and the com due to the complexity of the task and the uncertainty of the terms of its implementation. The Santander is a model of what a Wooster type cruiser with three triple 152mm turrets could have looked like by 1948. The Colombian Navy could have received such a cruiser from the U.S. with the same logic as Mexico could have with the Allende. The ship is named after the national hero Colombia, hero of the War of Independence, and President Francisco de Paula Santander from 1792 to 1840. San Martin. Another version of the Wooster class cruiser designed this time from 1949. The cruiser is a further development of the Wooster class cruiser. The general layout and architecture an architecture sim similar to the Wooster. The propulsion system has a similar layout to the, that used in the Wooster class cruisers, but is improved relative to the prototype to give up to 145,000 horsepower and a speed of 34 knots. In order to reduce the space taken up by funnels and the superstructure, the design was made to unify them into two funnels. I'm assuming the design probably had three or four, I'm guessing. The Argentine Navy could have purchased such a cruiser from the U.S. after the war, as it happened in reality with two Brooklyn-class light cruisers in 1951. The ship was named after the national hero of Argentina, one of the leaders of the War of Independence of the Spanish Colonies in America in 1810-1826, Jose de San Martin, 1778-1850. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's a bit of... well, not a bit, there's a few problems here. I guess I was trying to say we have a bit of a problem. We have a bit of several problems here with this line. America wasn't giving away cruisers to South America um, from like 1950 until the late 60s when they got really worried about uh, communist influences in that part of the world. There were a few that were transferred um, in the very er late 40s, very early 50s because we just didn't want to... Um, sponsor any type of arms race down in that part of the world at the time for for various reasons that we don't really have time to get into in a single dev blog video so the tiers eight to ten in this line definitely wouldn't have been possible from a historical standpoint of things especially with these ships that weren't finished until if we're taking the same timeline as the Wooster class of these designs would have been approved to be the Wooster class of cruisers um they wouldn't have been built until 1948 and put into service probably until uh 1949 1950 so would it make sense for us to turn around and then just sell these new cruisers that we spent millions of dollars on you know re well billions of dollars researching developing and um designing and building and turn around and sell them to Mexico, Colombia, and what was the last one, Argentina in the, um, but within, with, within, within the same decade. And they do bring up the, the, the Brooklyn's and that did happen. That was a deal struck as part of a, again, an, an, an um, an attempt to, keep as many nations on America's side at the beginning of the Cold War as possible. There were six Brooklyns that were transferred to uh, the, was it the Chile, the Argentinian, and the Brazilian navies. So each of those countries got two of those Brooklyns, and that was it for a very long time until the 1960s. Um, so the, the tier 8 through 10, again, wouldn't have happened historically. And, yeah, that's the beginning of the problems here. Now, um, most of this line are second-hand and hand-me-down ships, which, I mean, if you're going for, like, the more modern um, cruisers, sure, you would have had to do that to get this line here. But there were enough real still, or real designs that were being considered by many of these South American countries that you could have gotten up to at least the tier 7 before you had to start bringing in um, hand-me-down ships that were either uh, sold as surplus or uh, whatever have you to the countries of South America. 
And in fact, this was done so by a couple of South American players um, back in, I think, uh, late 2021. So there's another link, if you'd like to check that out, in the description down below to their proposition. So this was made by the players Frosty, the Dark Star, Calden, uh, Bruno Cesar, and Talleyrand. If I murdered your names, I do apologize. Now, um, I won't go through this, in, through this in full detail. Please go check out their website and look at the propositions that, that these guys made. They did a much thorough job than apparently Wargaming did here with um, looking into the naval history of these navies and what you could have done. Now the ships these guys proposed, they stated in their article that they focused on ships that were either built in South America or ships that were designed in South America or designed for South America but built over in Europe because, you know, they doesn't have the resources that, you know, a more uh, modern and developed country like uh, the UK has in the 1920s and 30s rather than the South American countries that were, of course, colonies for so long. And, you know, again, European countries were far more developed and had the resources and capabilities and to, to, to build these ships. So, yeah, they do a much better job of doing that than Wargaming. And it's not until the Tier 10 that they have to actually make up a boat. And I guess technically the ships Wargaming proposes aren't made up, but, you know, designs for <laughs> tier 8 to 10, so just the, the Wooster designs and variants and such. But they do a much better job of bringing up ships that I think would have, and if Wargaming does have time to change, will serve the tech line better than just having an Italian ship here, an American ship here, a, a, a British ship here that maybe kind of could have, would have in the right condition, the right day of the month, could have been sold to perhaps Argentina, maybe even Chile too, if the government was feeling generous. There's so much of that wording throughout this the, 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 uh, this dev blog where it's like, yeah, you know, they could have gotten one of these, but maybe, but the ships that these guys bring up, they were all either serving in these navies or they were going to be built or they were in serious talks about building these things and then like world war ii or world war one happened and that's what happened with a lot of the um, south american navies they would try to get these ships um built in europe but like with the asian course she was being built for brazil as a rio de janeiro but of course world war one broke out so the ship got seized and well stayed with the royal navy happened to several um, South American ships that were being built in the UK. And then after War One, of course, you have the trees and such, so they kind of couldn't really do too much. And then World War Two broke out, and then all the political um, posturing that had to happen after World War Two. So, yeah, it was a scramble to get what they could get their hands on, which is why they kept the, the Brooklyn Light cra uh, the, 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 the Brooklyn Light Cruisers in service for, like, 50 years, I think 40, 30 years. In, uh, in some of these countries, and um, I, I thought Wargaming might have had the stones to do it, put in the, put, uh, putting in the Belgrano in as a either the Tier 8 or maybe a, um, a, te a premium ship, which, which they still might do, but you know, I guess they are trying to prevent that PR storm. I mean, the the, the Nueva de Julio, that, that was a little bit of a, a ruckus on the forums, I don't think anything too bad, um, but I don't think today too many would have issues putting in the the the, the belgrano um and then of course we have the 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 seven sister the I'm, I'm gonna murder this i'm sorry peruvians the growl grow growl the seven class cruiser that was uh sold to peru by the netherlands and she actually was up for sale a little while ago you could sell her they uh decided to scrap her uh, for $2 million, you could buy the last artillery gun cruiser in the world. That would maybe would have been a Patreon call. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of ships they could have chosen from that were real ships that had history or designs that were, you know, much more homegrown than what we've gotten here. And what's really weird about this devlog, too, is how early on a lot of these models are. Most of these models are like one or two steps above line models. And I'm not sure if they just weren't too sure about the direction they chose, so they released it early on so they could make changes if they need to. We don't even know how these ships are supposed to play. I mean, I mean they're, they're light cruisers. I'm going to assume they're going to have HE and have rapid-firing guns, and they have, uh, according to, this, uh, to the dev blog, they're going to have combat firing instructions, or combat instructions. Those are the bonuses that the super ships get. They don't mention what they're going to be. They just mention that they will have them. 
So, I'm disappointed. I would have liked to have seen some more homegrown ships or homegrown designs, even if they were built by the UK. Uh, the American ships in this list don't, I'm, I'm sorry, in this tech tree don't make any sense. The, uh, the US was not selling these ships in such large quantities to South American countries after the war. I mean, you probably could have gotten it in there to Mexico, maybe. Um, but yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense, historically speaking with what they decided to do here with the tier 8, 9, and 10. So that's my two cents on this. Hopefully this is early enough along to where uh, Wargaming can scrap these. I mean, all these ships would make fine premium ships in my mind, so I don't think it'd be a total loss for Wargaming. Um, you know, they can just shift these over to the premium ships and definitely make their monies back uh, that way. But yeah, the, the tech line should definitely be the most homegrown ships you can get for that nation, not just go with a bunch of hand-me-downs that... We're getting made up for some reason. I guess I really wanted to reuse that Wooster model for whatever reason. So, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.